Hey, let us talk about history again. This time about Queen Zenobia and the Palmyrene Empire. By the way, did you know there was an empire that lasted for a stunning three years before being disbanded by the Roman Emperor Aurelian? And during those three years, it was ruled by a woman. Sounds intriguing, right? Stick around to learn all about Queen Zenobia and the Palmyrene Empire. Today, we are diving into the history of the Palmyrene Empire and its famous queen Zenobia. But before we begin, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and maybe even hit the subscribe button. Well, with that being said, let's get right into it. So, what exactly was the Palmyrene Empire, and where was it? The Palmyrene Empire was a short-lived splinter state that broke away from the Roman Empire during the instability of the 3rd century. It lasted only three years. Named after its capital, Palmyra, this city lies in what is now modern Syria. Palmyra was known for its strategic location as an oasis, so basically a fertile area in the desert that became a major stop along the famous Silk Road. And because of this prime location, Bermuda thrived as a hub for traders, merchants and travelers, and the city became prosperous. It also boasted some impressive Greek or Roman architecture, with influences from Persian and Arabic culture. Imagine towering columns and stunning stone facades right in the middle of the desert. But who was the powerful woman behind this empire? Well, meet Julia Aurelia Zenobia, also known as Septimia Zenobia, after marrying Lucius Septimus Aureanatus, the ruler of Palmyra. Born in 240 CE, Zenobia was a force to be reckoned with. She was a Roman citizen, fluent in Greek, Latin, Aramaic and Egyptian, a quadrilingual, very impressive. Zenobia claimed descent from two legendary women, Tita of Cartago and the famous Cleopatra VII of Egypt. Really nice. She wasn't just a culture ruler. Zenobia was also a skilled horseback rider, famous for marching with her troops and keeping up with them. It said she could outhunt and outdrink any of her soldiers. Now that's a queen with some serious endurance, isn't it? Zenobia's journey to power began after marrying Orianatus, the ruler of Palmyra. Her husband played a key role in defeating the Sassanid Persians and gaining favor with Rome. But when Orianatus and his son were assassinated, Zenobia took up the mantle as regent for her son, Babalatus. He was only ten at the time pretty similar to the story of Semiramis. Rome was a mess during the crisis of the 3rd century, with 26 emperors rising and falling in rapid succession. Amidst all this chaos, Zenobia seized the moment to expand her control. She took Egypt and extended her rule to parts of Asia Minor and the Levant. Her bold actions didn't go unnoticed, however, once Emperor Aurelian came to power, he set his sights on bringing the eastern provinces, including Palmyra, back under Roman control. Although Zenobia minded coins featuring both her son and Aurelian, it wasn't enough to appease Rome. She even adopted imperial titles like Augusta for herself, which was a big no-no because only Roman royalty could use those titles. So, in 272 CE, Aurelian launched a campaign against Zenobia. The two sides clashed in several battles. But, obviously, Zenobia's forces were ultimately defeated. And after a defeat, Zenobia fled to Palmyra, hoping to find refuge in Persia. But she was captured at the Euphrates River, what happened to her after that is unclear. Some say 
She was paraded through Rome in golden chains, but others believe Aurelian spared her, allowing her to live in a comfortable Roman estate for the rest of her days. Personally, I go with the second one. Either way, Zenobia's legacy is a fierce warrior queen and clever ruler and doers. Her story has inspired countless works of art and literature, making her one of the most iconic female figures of the ancient world. So, what do you think really happened to Zenobia? Did the Romans truly let her live out her days peacefully, or was there more to the story? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I've got much more incredible stories from history coming your way. So, hopefully, we'll see you in the next journey. Thanks for watching.